Grace and peace to you and welcome to worship for Sunday, April 28th, 2024 from Charleswood United Church in Winnipeg. My name is Michael Wilson. I'm being joined by Benjamin and together it is our delight to bring you this time of prayer, praise and reflection on this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. I remind us that Charleswood United Church is on Treaty One land, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree and Dene people, the ancestral lands of the Dakota and Lakota people, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are a community committed to a future of right relations and reconciliation. I'm outside in front of the church and I'm going to point back at the sign over my shoulder and invite you to join us if you're in the Winnipeg area next Sunday on May the 5th for Jazz Communion, an annual time of celebration in which some very talented young musical artists from Winnipeg come and join us and we have a communion service with a little bit more swing than usual. There are many things going on at the church throughout this spring and we hope that you'll visit us at our website and give us a call if you wish and join us when you can. We're delighted you have chosen to join us this way for this time of worship Come, let us be before God together. It's a song of praise to the Maker, of blessings high in the tree. It's a song of praise to the Maker. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to a holy cry. And sing, sing, sing to the Maker. It's a call of life to the giver. When grace and water it's a call of life to the giver, the high tides race on the shore. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to a holy cry, and sing, sing, sing to the name. It's a hymn of love to the lover, the bumblebee's home along. It's a hymn of love to the lover, the summer breeze joins the song. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the whole. And sing, sing, sing to the Maker. It's a chorus of all creation. It's sung by all living things. It's a chorus of all creation. A song the universe sings. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to a holy cry. And sing, sing, sing to the Maker. A reading from the book of Acts in chapter 8, beginning at verse 26. Let us listen for the word of God. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So Philip got up and went. 
Now, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Kandache, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The Ethiopian replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The Ethiopian eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Amen. May God bless us with understanding of this God's gracious word. This is the day this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will be glad, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. For voices to sing our praise to the Lord. Praise God with joyful music. Praise God today. This is the holy day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day for praising our Lord above praise to the Lord. His enduring of praise God today. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will be glad, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day to raise 
our voice in song. Praise to the Lord. Praise God with heart and voice in song. Praise God today. I admit, a couple of times a week, I may drop into a local coffee shop, a famous coffee shop. Part of me doesn't want to give away the name, but it is a Seattle-based coffee shop <laughs> with a mermaid for a logo. <laughs> and its name rhymes with car ducks. <laughs> All right, the cat's out of the bag. A couple of times a week, I like to go into Starbucks. And Starbucks is a curious place because it has long imagined itself as something more than a coffee shop. It thinks of itself as a community. It thinks of itself as less a place of commerce and more a place of connection. And because it thinks of itself in these ways, it is glad to speak about its values and invite you to share its values, their values. I was in there the other day and there's a sign posted right on the glass window right beside the door. You walk by it time after time and you don't pay any notice of it. But this particular day I did and I stopped and I read it and I was intrigued by it. And so I took a photo of it and I want to tell you what it says. As you enter Starbucks, there's a sign that greets you that welcomes you and it says, Welcome, in big bold letters. Join us in creating a joyful and inclusive space where we can uplift one another over coffee. Thank you for being a part of our community. You belong here. And just for good measure at the end, a heart emoji. I mean, come on. That's fantastic, right? I was intrigued by it because it seemed to me it describes us in so many different ways. It describes the church. This would be a great church mission statement, wouldn't it? Joyful and inclusion and welcome and uplift one another and you belong here. And most especially, I suppose, you're a part of our community. Wow, if you've got all of that going for you, if you're part of the Starbucks community and it's a joyful and uplifting and inclusive experience and I feel like I belong, they call my name after all when my order is ready. Well then, I don't need anything else, right? Doesn't that provide it all? Or is it possible you could be part of the Starbucks community? and still know that something is missing. I'm fond of the story in Acts 8, the encounter on the desert road between Philip, disciple of Jesus, and an unnamed Ethiopian eunuch. But as I was thinking about it this week, it occurred to me that there's this tremendous imbalance between the two central characters of it. You have to wonder, is there really anything that a poor, fishing, Jewish Christian disciple like Philip has to offer the man who is described in Acts chapter 8? It seems to me he's somebody who has it all that there's nothing missing in his life. How could he want anything more? I'm just using the description that the Bible gives for him. He is the minister of finance, for lack of a better term, of the Queen of Ethiopia. That tells us that he is a numerate and a literate man. He is so well off that he is able, in a time where only the wealthy could travel, to journey from Ethiopia, south of 
Egypt, along the Nile Valley, across the desert, that he has the resources to take this trip to go to Jerusalem. That tells us something, that he's living a pretty good life. He has power, he has authority, he has the trust of his queen. He has the wherewithal to take a trip from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. The story also tells us that while he's traveling, he is riding, that he is able to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. That's what Acts says he is doing. So it means somebody else is driving the chariot, and chariot is the means of transportation that the Bible says he is using. So as someone who has wealth, who has authority, someone who is a sexual minority and yet entrusted with a remarkable amount of power and influence and affluence, we ask ourselves, is there anything more he needs in his life? He even gets Ethiopian coffee every day. Along comes Philip, led by the Spirit, we are told. And that something that is missing, that overcomes this great imbalance between the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip, is presented to us in the form of three questions. In the story that we read in the narrative on three different occasions, the Ethiopian eunuch asks a question, and within, with each question, we get deeper into the thing that is missing in his life, in his heart, the thing that despite having all of the benefits of life, this one human still felt he needed. They are traveling, but not traveling together. The Ethiopian eunuch is, of course, in the chariot. He is reading the scroll of Isaiah. Philip, they must have been stopped because he would have been on foot, approaches it. And he asks the Ethiopian, do you understand what you are reading? Here's the first question. How can I understand if no one will guide me? The Ethiopian may have scripture in his possession, He's a learned man, he has an education, but he doesn't understand what it means to be a community of interpretation. That's what we are. That's what we are as a church, a community of interpretation. There's no expert who has all the answers to everything that is in Scripture. We learn together, we read together, we try to live out what we learn together. And when what we live out um, comes into being, uh, if that proves to be something that we feel edified by, inspired by, uplifted by, then we continue to do that thing. Um, but the Ethiopian, to his credit, asks the question, how can I if no one will guide me? He knows he needs to be part of a community of interpretation. Well, guess what Philip is? Part of a community, the followers of Jesus, a community of interpretation who heard Jesus throughout his life take scripture and interpret it for an understanding of how it applies to us as a whole. The second question comes after Philip and the Ethiopian have an opportunity to read the passage from Isaiah that the Ethiopian had been reading in his chariot. And he puts a question to Philip. Tell me, if you will, of whom does the prophet speak, himself or another? And here's Philip's opportunity to bear witness that, yes, we are a community of interpretation. We are trying to understand the meaning of life and the lens through which we gain that understanding is Jesus. Philip gets to tell the Ethiopian eunuch who is comfortable with scripture, familiar with scripture, who wants to understand, who has yet to be part of a community of interpretation, that indeed Jesus is the lens through which we understand 
the new life that Jesus promises us. Which brings us in sequence to the third and most important question. Had Philip not been one to share his understanding of Scripture with the Ethiopian, and had he not also shared that Jesus is the lens through which we understand God's teachings, the Ethiopian would not have asked the third question, what is to prevent me from being baptized? Let's hang on to the answer of that question, though we know from our hearing that Philip immediately baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch he has met on the road. Sometimes we are led to think that all we need for community is something to love. And then maybe to be in the company of others who love that same thing. I love this place where I get coffee. I love my hockey team and I go down to the whiteout during the playoffs. I'm part of an online group and we all love this celebrity or we all love this um, product or we all live and we say that that's a community. But there's always something missing if our definition of community is just a group of people, a company of those who love some shared thing. Because a community, an authentic community, a deep and life-giving community is also something that loves you back. I do like going into Starbucks. I'm not afraid to say so. And they do make me feel welcome. At least if you go to the same one over and over again, they get to know your order. Do you want the usual? Yes, I'm going to have the usual. They call you by name because you've entered it into your phone and it comes up on their computer screen. But <laughs> nonetheless, that's just taking advantage of technology. Michael, your order's ready. I can love it. I mean, I don't love it that much, but I, can love, but I love it. But they don't love me back. I can't call Starbucks when my heart is broken. I can't call Starbucks when I'm in the hospital and I need a visit. I can't ask Starbucks to help me feed the hungry. I can't ask Starbucks to join with me in sponsoring a refugee family. And you know, I can't go into Starbucks and sing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling at the top of my voice and expect them to join in or at least not look at me with a strange expression and ask me to leave. I may belong there, but I don't belong there that much. Because ultimately, that's the type of a community that is primarily or basically a transaction. And as long as community is transactional, it cannot be what you and I need it to be and that is transformational. We need in the depth of our hearts to be part of a company, part of a crowd, part of a community of people that shares things that we love, but also experiences in it a community that loves us back. What is to prevent me from being baptized? The Ethiopian eunuch asks Philip. And by his actions, Philip gives the only answer that can be offered to that question. Nothing, says Philip, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Nothing. Amen. Oh,
Let us unite our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. God who fills each day with kindness and love, we thank you for the many blessings that are ours to share. We thank you for the goodness that greets us when we wake, for the comforts of home, the care of family, the emerging life of spring. We thank you for the blessings that come to your people in communities of faith. We praise you for our church home, for the times of teaching and the times of prayer, the times of worship and the times of care, the times we gather, and the times we are united while apart. We thank you for the blessings we enjoy in this country we praise you for the ways our neighbors are given care and opportunity. We thank you for those who are new to our country and ask that we might welcome them as you would have us. We pray for those like Philip who speak of a loving kindness for the whole of creation, an unconditional acceptance of the mosaic that is humankind. As your people, we turn to you when we need assurance of your presence in times and places of trouble. We pray for our sisters and brothers who are ill or ailing, who seek recovery in hospital, who are troubled from living in a time of transition or isolation. We pray for the brokenhearted as we each make our way through times of grief. May we be held by family, friends, and community who accompany us on this difficult path. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, joining our voices to those everywhere who are praying for an end to the destruction visited upon them. We pray for the victims of the horrifying violence in Israel and Gaza and an end of hostilities and the return of hostages. We seek to worship you with an authentic faith and a deepening love. Accept the prayers of your people as we offer them in the name of Jesus Christ, who is with us when we pray together and say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us for this time of worship. May the peace which passes all understanding be your companion this coming week. For now, be well, be safe, and be hopeful. Amen.